They got you game seven. Uh, oh, happy oh, New Year! Oh, 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 Woo! It's your coming alive year. It is the year, the decade that you are going to conquer and heal and overcome the obsession around food and diets. And so let's chat today. Well, let me grab a sip of water and I'd love to see who's here. So comment below, where are you seeing this from? And say hi. Did you stay up until midnight until the new year? All right. I'm glad that you could join me live because Facebook might edit out the music. I tried it earlier and they did. So we will see, but it'll be funny <laughs> and entertaining if they do. So that's totally fine. All right. Let's jump in. So today is day three of your morning boosts. And this is something um, that I just really wanted to do out of just wanting to contribute to your journeys and just give you some truth and realness. This is the new year. Welcome to 2020, a new decade. And I know this time is really high for um, diet mentality. You're going to be seeing diets everywhere on the commercials and on the radio, just billboard signs everywhere. And I want to help you do this year differently. So today we're going to get real about diets and what will actually heal emotional eating. And so tomorrow I'm going to be sharing my story in a way that I've never shared before publicly, unless you've come to some of my um, motivational speaking talks that I've had, but I'm really going to be diving into my story and sharing um, what made me decide that I wanted to do this and become a certified eating psychology coach and um, owner of Blissfully Healthy Wellness Coaching. And um, I'm really excited to share with you the details about what it really took to heal emotional eating and release 50 pounds in the process and um, how that's helped, how I've been able to keep that off for over a decade. Okay, so let's jump in. If this is the first time you're joining, I am Coach Emmy, owner of Blissfully Healthy Wellness Coaching, certified eating psychology coach and motivational speaker. And this is a series I'm doing to help you just get some real information. Whether you choose to work with me 
or not, that's totally fine. This is really about contributing because I wish when I was in the thick of it, struggling with emotional eating and hating my body and hating myself that I had this information to be able to know what to do. Hi, Cheryl. So glad you're here. Hello. Good morning. Hi, Heather. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So um, that is what this is about. And as a quick reminder, these Facebook Lives are going to be available on my YouTube channel and here on my personal page until the end of January. And then I will be taking them down and they will be um, accessible to my private coaching clients and my Living Blissfully Healthy uh, community as uh, part of their library. And my camera's a little blurry, so bear with me a second. Let me just, boop, there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's do a deep dive about the diet cycle. And what I'd love for you to do is just have an open mind to this. And there's no judgment here because you're talking to a woman that uh, did all sorts of diets um, since from the age of eight years old, you know, until about 24. I really did a ton of diets. I was obsessed about food and weight. Um, you're talking to a woman here, or I am talking here to you about, about, overcoming it because I was so in the thick of it that I would eat sugar with the spoon out of a bag when I couldn't find something sweet to eat. Um, that's how serious it was for me. I was very depressed about my weight. I hated my body and you can have freedom from this. And I found the path to do that. So as we talk about the diet cycle this morning, please just keep an open mind again, not judging yourself. And I am not judging you either. But one thing I know for truth, part of the five puzzle pieces for healing emotional eating that I've created as part of my program. The first one, is to get out of the diet mentality. And I wanna tell you the truth about why that is and why diets are more harmful than helpful every single time for emotional eaters and stress eaters, okay? So as you're listening to this, please notice and just say, huh, yep, I see myself in there, or oh, no, that's not me, okay? And you can comment below on any comments um, as we're talking about this because it does take a little bit of time. Hello, Jeanette, I'm glad you're here. Um, it does take a little bit of time for the comments to come in and I wanna answer any questions you have and see your comments. So let's talk about this. Is this you or do you see yourself uh, parts of this? So what is the diet cycle? Let's jump in. So let's just say that this is the new year and I have a mindset of this year, I'm really going to do it. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to stop emotional eating. This year, I'm really going to do it. And I get this gung-ho feeling, this amping up, and I'm in the side of the pendulum of the all. I got to do it all. I got to do it all right now, and I got to do it perfectly, right? So I might measure all my food. I might put it into an app or journal it all. And and the part that makes it obsessive is that I get irritated if somebody else eats my food, I'm um, worried about food, I'm thinking about food. It just becomes more of a job and more things to do, and I'm very, very focused on it. It's hard for me to be present to other things. So there's this gung-ho feeling, but in the body, it might actually feel like a forcing up, like I'm forcing myself to do it. I need to kick myself into gear I just need to kick myself in the pants. I just need to force myself to do it. Um, and so I think, okay, this year I'm going to do it. I'm not going to eat anything but broccoli and chicken for 30 days to jumpstart my weight loss. Let's just pretend, okay? And so a couple days in, I'm feeling high and mighty. I'm feeling like this false diet high. And then the craving set in. And listen to this part, please. So the craving set in, but because... I haven't learned how to cope with my feelings other than using food and diet obsession and hating my body. Now I've taken the food away. And so if food is the way that I get love and comfort and nurturing and numbing out, but I don't have the tools, it just feels starts to feel wobbly. And I start, I'm trying to control my food, but I feel this yearning and food talks to me. And I see some chocolates or some cookies in the break room and I, I'm white knuckling it, but I'm telling myself no. 
but it's a war. It is a war of, I shouldn't eat the food. Yes, I should. Well, maybe just one bite. No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. And it's just an inner battle and exhausting. And then a couple days go by and I'm doing good. I'm on track and I'm starting to have more cravings now too, because the physiology of my body, I'm not eating in a balanced way. And so I've actually stripped more of my nutrients from my body and I'm now having more sugar cravings and food cravings. Are you seeing yourself in any of this so far? Comment below if you're like, just give me a yes or a no if you're seeing any of yourself in this. Okay, now here's, here's the other part of this. Why is it that diets can cre actually create emotional eating? Because here we go. So we're still in this example. And so then my cravings are out of whack. I'm physiologically craving it. I'm emotionally craving it. And I'm not feeling comfortable of feeling all my feelings. And I go to the food. And it just feels very subconscious. I just <sighs> grab it like that. And then I think, oh, I failed. I'm such a loser. Oh, I'm never going to be able to lose this weight, overcome this emotional eating thing. Oh, I'm such a failure. I'm so fat and ugly. Who would want this? Oh, just self-deprecating thoughts and shameful thoughts. Over one kiss, Tercy's kisses or over one bite of a cookie, it goes from this all to nothing mindset. And in that nothing mindset, since I've had a little bit, <clears throat> well, what we talked about yesterday was the nine types of emotional eating. Guess what comes up? Well, screw it. <laughs> screw it. Or last supper, binge eating. I already have failed. So why not? I just eat everything and anything that's not nailed down and doesn't fight back and make myself so sick. And then I'll start again next Monday. And so that's the diet cycle that I get to this all or nothing and perfectionism. And because perfectionism is unattainable and it's the lowest standard you can have for yourself because it is un unattainable. Once a hiccup comes about, which will happen, we get into that nothing mindset and anything and everything is okay and I'm going to eat, gorge myself until I get back on track and it just starts that cycle again, the roller coaster of it and where are our feelings and our emotions when we're in that cycle. We're not present to all the great things we have in life. We're not able to be happy. That is miserable, and I get it. I spent decades in that cycle, and I want to help you get out of that. So that's really what I wanted to talk about today is the truth around diets is they, if you have that perfectionism mindset and you're struggling with emotional eating, emotional eating is not a food problem. It's not, I promise you, it's not a food problem. Is nutrition important? Absolutely, and we definitely cover that in the Living Blissfully Healthy program, but in a very different way that makes it effective so it doesn't get into diet mentality, it's realistic to stick with, and you find yourself moving along through this journey and healing the emotional eating alongside of making nutritional changes that really truly support you in the lifestyle you want to create. So. Do you see yourself in any of those pieces? And, you know, if you're not commenting, that's okay. Just being honest with yourself. And this is why we need to have those emotional tools and get, in, get out of the perfection and diet mindset. Because as long as that's in place, we're not going to be able to make progress. And so that's that first place we want to do. It always starts with the mind first. And that's what this is all about. And that's what the first 30 days of my program with clients is all about, is jump starting your mindset for success. But what we first need to do whenever we want to change a problem is we first have to identify it. So that's what we want to do today. Do you see yourself identifying how in the past, decades, years, that diets have actually added to the struggle around food. Is that true for you or parts of it for you? And if you're, I get that you want to release weight. I understand that. And there can be this desperate place of, oh, I just want to take this weight off. I hate it. I hate it. I just want to take this weight off. 
And I promise you, when you just take that weight loss goal, not that we're going to ignore it, but we're just going to put that on the side for a little bit and trust that as we lean into this mindset and awareness and we see the problem, then we can learn how to change it. And so without being obsessive and focused and about food and weight, we can actually make changes where you don't want the food. So it doesn't become the struggle because this is not realistic to try to just white knuckle it around food. I actually want you to release those cravings, lose those cravings, and the food becomes not as interesting. It just becomes, eh, okay, I don't really want it. That's what we want to have happen, that you're able to get to that place. And trying to control food, it actually just makes it worse because of what we've explained here. So I just want to give you the truth and the honesty, and that is really that first place, is we've got to get out of the all or nothing and the perfectionism and that the diets, the diets, the diets, the talking about how this food is good and that food is bad. Is it true that there's good foods and there's foods that are made not as healthy? Absolutely, absolutely, and we do talk about that, but that is secondary because Food, emotional eating is not a food problem. If that were the case, you would have already had your weight loss or you would have already felt more freedom around food. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be struggling with eating challenges if that was the case. You know, so that's really that truth, that honesty there. So I want to give you all of this in many doses. It is okay if this is you. It is okay. We don't have a lot of this truth out there. And that's just simply what I want to do is give you the truth. Again, whether you decide to work with me or not, it's totally okay. I just want to help people struggle less. I understand. And I'm really going to do a deep dive tomorrow and talking about my story about how I started with struggling with emotional eating, all the things I did to try to overcome it and, um, and how I overcame that. I'm going to be talking about it, um, publicly really for the first time, unless you've come to one of my motivational speaking, um, events. Um, I haven't done it really in detail on video. And so tomorrow will be the first time I do that. And I will be honored if you will be live and be there to hear all about that because I want you to know that this is coming from a coach who really understands it and who has really been there and there is a way out of it, but we've got to do something different. So are you ready to do something different? I know it's scary to think, oh my gosh, if I'm not going to diet, then what the heck am I going to do? because you might have been dieting all your life. So what does it look like to not diet? So let's focus on the reward of no longer dieting. Let's just pretend for a moment and just imagine that you wake up in the day and you have peace with food and you're no longer obsessed with it. What would you think about? What would you do? How much more energy would you have because you're no longer beating yourself up and trying to control yourself with food. What would you do? Would you be happier? Absolutely, you would be happier and you would have so much more joy. So part of this is about identity and we need to shift your identity. So if you're it's subconsciously, it could be my identity is I'm an emotional eater. I struggle with food. I've always struggled with my weight and I wanna help you change that little bits by little bits, one step at a time. So today, observe. You are invited to observe. What are the diet thoughts that come up for you? What does that feel like in your body when you have a diet thought? When you see a diet commercial, do you feel that <gasps> gung-ho feeling? Like, yeah, let's do it. But it feels like a, like a false diet high. Do you feel an amping up? Okay, notice what it feels like in your body and observe and think about, truly think about how many diets have you tried in your lifetime? You might be thinking, oh, there's too many to count. I get it. I honestly really want you to try to count them. Really, like it would be such a blessing to yourself and this would help you so much break through. And this is one of the exercises I have clients do um, in the first parts of the Living Blissfully Healthy online program is literally to list them out as much as you can 
and just really see how many diets have I tried and look at that reality. Um, because again, emotional eating is not a food problem. It is a mental health. It is a wellness and it is an emotional coping challenge. And we need new coping skills and the food, the cravings for food will just fall away when we get that. And then the weight will come off as a side effect as well. And it will be sustainable. So that is why we need to get off the diet roller coaster. And that is the truth around why diets are always more harmful than helpful. With, whenever we restrict food, there will always be a backlash. It might be a couple of months. It might be a year. But 95% of diets fail after two years. That's a 5% chance of it actually working. And I want to give you more of the opportunity to have lifelong results that make you truly happy too. So I hope today's morning boost has been helpful and fun. And tomorrow we're going to do a deep dive into my story and where I was and how I got here because I really want you to know that I've been there. And we'll talk about that. For the first time, I will be sharing that live on video. And I'm really excited to do that. So say it with me, guys. Say it with me. Until we connect again tomorrow morning, you are invited to stop dieting and start living because a blissfully healthy lifestyle does not have an expiration date. And you, you are worth it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.